Good evening. I'm Camden Cohn, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. Nebraska men's basketball coach Fred Hoiberg met with the media earlier today. He touched on a couple of different topics, one of which was the leadership that he's seen from C.J. Wilcher this season. I'm really pleased with C.J. is his leadership this year, and that was a big question coming into this season is who was going to make up for Sam and Emmanuel and Derek. And C.J. really has been the guy in the huddles that has been uh, one of our vocal leaders. And, uh, you know, that's, that's huge in CJ's progression from when he got here to where he is today. Uh, you know, the strides that he's made in that area. And, you know, he's just uh, an awesome kid. He, uh, you know, has, has really helped us win some games uh, here. And, uh, you know, it's just a matter of time, I think, before, you know, he has a game, he makes you know, four or five, six threes. He's just shooting it that well in practice, and it's just a matter of time uh, before that happens. But as far as leadership and, and going out there and being vocal day in and day out, he's, he's been as consistent as anybody in, in that area. The Huskers take on Kansas State Sunday at 2. Earlier today, Nebraska Athletics announced that there would be a watch party at Pinnacle Bank Arena for the Volleyball National Championship game on Sunday. The Nebraska women's basketball team hosts Southern at noon, but free admission for the watch party begins at 1 p.m. with first serve set for two. For more information, visit Huskers.com. One top 25 college basketball game of note later tonight, 10th-ranked Gonzaga hosts 5th-ranked UConn. Tip-off is set for 9 Central on ESPN2. Our sports ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student-athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890Nebraska.com. Now, get ready for two hours of Sports Nightly right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. Lexi Rodriguez sails the serve. Oh, pass by head over that shot back by Jackson. Off the block control by Arkansas. Outside set, swing by head, blocked. Set the big run. Marcus comes right of a hesitation move off the screen from Mast. Raza double kicks it to Mast. Extra pass, Gary, extra pass. Eli Rice got the three. Eli Rice got the three. Six of those trios by Nebraska in the first half, 29-27. Served by Gillen. Bad pass, Harper. Laney has to chase it down, bumps it front left. Harper's going to take a big rip, cross court. In! Wow! That's an all-American roll shot. Coming off the bounce on the left wing, still dribbling. Passes oh out top. Get Gilly for three! You! Betcha! Huskers have the lead! Jazz Shelley hits the three! Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Greetings, Nebraska, and welcome to downtown Tampa, Florida, Amelie Arena, site tonight of every volleyball player's, coach's, and team's dream. The Final Four, where National semifinal number one brings together number four tournament seed, the Pittsburgh Panthers, 29 and four, co-champions of the Atlantic Coast Conference and the tournament's number one overall seed, your Nebraska Cornhuskers, 32 and one, champions of the Big Ten. Towards Harper, okay, pass fit outside, Bait North's big rip, cross court, cap flood the dig, Pittsburgh outside, shot snap blocked, Rick Alec, hell of a help, Merritt Peason doing a jig. Left side tip shot, Harper, Doug. Now the gold clad. Babcock swings. Libby Babcock tucked by Laney. Huskers have it left side. Harper, Murray, kaboom. 10 9, big red in the first. Sails it to the back middle. Pass by Vasquez Gomez right to her center. Fairbanks, Jack back right side. Swing blocked. Babcock is blocked. Ellie Payton hard. Nebraska's got four blocks. Already. More blocks in a preschool. Nebraska's up 15 12. Pittsburgh, Fairbanks outside, Vasquez Gomez, nice up by Kennedy Orr, great take by Kennedy. Left side swing, Harper off the block and out. Another lengthy rally. Served a laney diving pass, bump set from the back row. Harper swings off hands, Doug. Now Pittsburgh outside, Vasquez Gomez off hands, high carom. Easy in system take for Lexi to Bergen outside. Harper, kaboom, inside the block. What? Volleyball. Lexi, good pass outside. Batenhorst, big rip. And dug by Vasquez Gomez. Now the gold clad Panthers right side swing. Babcock cross court. Nice up by Harper. Nebraska's got it. Batenhorst cross court. Beauty. What a shot. 
Eight feet off the net, she goes cross court. She's throwing fists up in the air. Everybody's okay. It's 11 9 Nebraska. Valeria Vasquez Gomez to serve for Pittsburgh. 24 17 Nebraska. She serves to the back middle. Lexi, perfect pass. Bergen sets middle. Pick Alec. Doug. Whistle net violation. Pittsburgh, they did it. Call the grandkids. Nebraska wins the national semi. 25 17, set three. Boy, it was quite a night in Tampa last night. The Huskers were fantastic. They sweep Pittsburgh to make a, a, their fifth appearance in the last nine years in the national championship match. And our own Jessica Cudi had a courtside seat for it all. How much fun was that? It was a lot of fun. It was. It happened so quick, right? I mean, even I was talking to Lauren before the match, and she was like, "I, I just have a feeling this is gonna. It's gonna be at least four, but probably five. But then, you know, I was helping with the pregame stream, and the next thing I know, it's like the first set's halfway over, and it just it, it went by so fast. And the, just the way that the Huskers dominated, too, a team that really hadn't, I think Pitt had only been swept once all year. And so they just, they dominated, and sitting right behind the bench and getting to, to see how this team interacts was really special. You, you, you hear about it, and you can maybe see it a little bit, but when you're sitting right behind it and seeing how they communicate and their interactions and how much fun they're having and the camaraderie. So, and, and then again, sitting behind the bench, they switch, right, back and forth. So I was sitting behind Nebraska's bench, and then I was sitting behind Pitt's bench. And you want to talk about two drastically different huddles. I mean, and, and Pitt was pretty much... They were frustrated, they were rattled, and it was really from that end of that first set on. Like, it never seemed like they had it together, which was completely different than what you saw from Nebraska, who, even though despite probably Coach Cook maybe saying maybe not their best match all year, but still just the way that they were able to come in and dominate and stick together, it, it truly is a testament to why this team is where they are because of really how they work together throughout this entire process. Well, that's fascinating to hear you talk about kind of observing the bench because you do that in football for us every Saturday. So it is a different feel. Is there, a, to me, it seems like there's kind of a calmness about John yes. Cook's teams when they're in the huddles and they're on the bench. Is that, a, is that a, an accurate adjective or would you use something different? Calm, yes, but when they're when things are going right, they're pretty fired up. I mean, they can get pretty fired up, but then, you know, like Becca Alec is, is certainly the first to come. When Allie Batenhorst rattled off, I think, like five straight points there in that third set, boy, she was over there just screaming and yelling and, and fired up. But, yeah, it's even when, when Pitt was going on the run and called the timeout, I believe it was in that first set, and, boy, it was like you would have never known that Pitt was on a run. They are. They are, they are calm, cool, collected, and... You know, we, we talk a lot about Bergen's demeanor, and it, it really is that's exactly how she is on the sideline, just just really laser-focused and, and calm, cool. She is just never gets rattled, but that, that they are. They're, they are not – you never know. I think that's the, the sign. Other than if they're celebrating something big happen, you wouldn't know what's going on in the ma match, which I think is just so key. They take it one point at a time, and no matter if they're on a run or the other team's on a run – Okay, it's on to the next. We're not thinking about what had just happened. We're, what are we going to do for the next point and the next point? And that's been their motto all, all year and certainly what, what you continue to see last night. We saw images of the team getting off the bus. That looked like wow. a zoo. And then what was the atmosphere like in the arena? It was dominated by Husker fans. It's crazy, too, because the pit coach was saying how they, he didn't think it was going to be a factor, the, the crowd. The Husker fans there, and they were absolutely a factor from the start. They got there early. They were loud when when the team ran out to warm up. They were cheering. Then the starting lineups. It was I cannot tell you how drastically different it was when they were announcing the pit starting lineup compared to the Husker. And they announced actually the whole team and put up their headshot. And when they were doing stuff with Nebraska, whether it be their starting lineup announcing the team or their their intro video when they're running out. It was drastically louder with Nebraska. And, you know, I, I got out and walked around and, and saw some fans. And the, the, at that Harpoon Harry's that you, everyone was telling me to go to, that was the spot of the alumni event. And it was bodies to bodies. And you would hear them yelling, go Big Red. And they're, they're chanting the whole time. And I think they were there like three hours before the gates even opened. So they had been there all day. And so and just seeing every time there was a group of Husker fans that walk by, they'd start chanting. But then, yeah, then when you got closer to the arena and closer to match time, just seeing the amount of Husker fans 
uh, you know, they never cease to amaze you, and, and w yet we knew that this is what it was going to be. But I think, again, still just seeing it, and I, there's no doubt in my mind there's going to be even more here come Sunday, you know, now that they are playing for a national title. But just the way that they showed up, and I guarantee you that they're from all over the country. You know, I'm sure there's, so I think Lauren asked me, do you think these are people from, like, the East Coast from Florida? I was like, I think there probably are. Husker fans from Florida, but I think that a ton of people travel from Nebraska and from all across the country to be here. And as everybody keeps saying, this is our bowl game, right? And so I think Husker fans showed out, and, and it is, it's just so special to see, but there's no doubt it was vastly Husker. It was like Devaney 2.0 in there last <laughs> night. There's, I'm, I'm not lying. It did seem loud watching it on TV. Jessica Cootie with us. She's down in Tampa covering this Huskers Final Four run, which will now culminate in the championship match at 2 o'clock. On Sunday, what did the did the team stick around and watch part of the Texas Wisconsin match? What what did they do after the match? They did, and you know, again, because of the two days in between, I think it was, and then they didn't even practice until four o'clock today, and so they or well, it was a, it was a longer practice, so I believe it started at three here. But it was in the afternoon, and then Texas was practi practicing after Nebraska. So letting the teams practice about the time that they're going to play on Sunday, too. But then they get a whole another full day tomorrow to get rested, prepared, all of that. So I do think probably maybe if it would have been a quicker turnaround, they wouldn't have allowed them to watch or stay and watch most of it. But I think so we had ended up leaving in the third set, and the team was still there watching. And so, yeah, I think they took it all in. They watched, and uh, but, yeah, they were there. Uh, after the match, watching Texas, Wisconsin very closely. Um, and then that's the, again, that's kind of what's nice about having the extra time in between is that you weren't so concerned, I think, probably about, you could maybe celebrate a little bit more than what you could have if it was a quicker turnaround, right? Because you do have that extra day in between, so they could really take it all in. Well, I'm proud of you for sticking around to the third set. I know Mama Cooley is probably ready to get hit the hit the town. <laughs> yeah, night. you know, so her seat was like front row. So during the Texas Wisconsin match, a couple of the the a few of the Husker fans had filed out, and my cousin was watching in California and texted my mom, "Are you tired? You look tired." <laughs> so she, yeah, but we uh, she wanted to stay, and I was like, "I'm tired. Let's go." So she was kind of into that match, and Texas looked good last night, but. You know, and, and everyone keeps asking me about it. I'm like, yeah, as for as whatever as bad, quote unquote, as Wisconsin looked last night, you know that they would have brought it and they would have been playing out of their mind against Nebraska. So it's just because they didn't look as good last night doesn't mean that it w that they would be like that on Sunday. You know, so I still think I still think even though as good as Texas looked, I still think Texas is the better matchup for Nebraska. Well, yeah, you were around the, some of the team today. How, how do they feel about this? The, Nebraska beat them in 21 in Austin to get to the Final Four, so we haven't played them since for two years. Is the team uh, got to be excited about this, right, to go match up with the Longhorns? Yeah, but I just, what's, what I keep going back to is just this team is the same as they've been all year and how they're approaching it. And I think that's what separates them and what makes them so special is, yeah, they want to enjoy the moment, but... Um, they're they're locked in and focused and, and they're they're loose and enjoying the moment, but they're they're moving on to the next right and, and getting ready for Texas and so they celebrated and, and enjoyed it last night, but they've got bigger goals in mind than just making it to the national championship and so they want to they want to be holding up that trophy. So I think just again just the way that they've approached everything all season long and you know sitting down with those assistant coaches all throughout the season for the dig. They just kept talking about that, right? It was like, seems like the same messaging from even from the stadium match. They talked about, we want to approach this like it's a regular match and we can't look ahead. We can't look behind. We, we've just got to stay in the moment and focus on the moment. But so that's what they've done all season. And it seems like that's what they're doing again today. And, you know, it's just a, a different stage, a bigger stage. But they're, I think they're just, what they've done all year, trying to keep it the same. And that's what's worked for them. And, but they're, it's a fun group. I just I cannot understate that enough how joyful they are, how much they really enjoy being around each other. 
again, just watching throughout the match, getting to be so close and see how they interact. They are they are so happy to celebrate one another. When think about that match last night, and there were different spurts of time throughout those entire three sets that somebody else was stepping up and delivering in big moments, and it and it and it's kind of what it's been throughout the season too. And and it's just so neat to see how they celebrate each other instead of like. Oh well, I just want to keep having a big night. No, they're just as excited when somebody else steps up and delivers in a big moment. And it's it's kind of sounds cliche when they talk about how close they are, but it, I mean it is very very evident when you watch this team up close and personal, and when you interact with them in these kinds of situations. And and there's no doubt in my mind. And, and Lauren Cook West has said this too, but it's the reason why they're why they're here, and it's the reason why they have a really good chance to win a national title. The, the blocking last night was amazing, Jessica. Yeah, just, they just I totally frustrated that you could tell the Panthers. Were were frustrated that they were getting so many shots sent right back at them. And I, I could even hear some roof, roof, roof chants <laughs> in the arena last night. But I think they blew everybody away around the country that watched that match about how good they were defensively. I don't know that any of us are surprised. We know that's kind of where they, they hang their hat, right? Yeah, and, and they just were so well prepared. And Pitt was one of the best offenses in the country. I think they kind of... Put a little chip on their shoulder a little bit that everyone was saying, oh, it's about the pit offense and, you know, and what, what, what the defense can do. And I, they were so dialed in. And Coach Cook mentioned that about they stuck to the game plan. They followed to a T what they were supposed to do, especially in the, in the uh, blocking. And so, it, yeah, it was unbelievable. And that was no doubt what, what really frustrated Pitt and kind of started to, I think, make the wheels come off a little bit for Pitt was they were just, they, the things that normally work for them were not working against Nebraska. Well, I sure hope those Husker fans stick around for Sunday. I mean, it's a long time from Thursday night to Sunday. This is a different format for the NCAA. Usually it's two days later. This is going to be three days later. Are we worried that the fans are going to leave or am I? No, no. no. Not worried at all. I mean, I'm walking around today to go to the arena to practice, and I see multiple Husker fans. GVR, go Big Red. I mean, it is like they're everywhere. They're staying. And I think probably, I mean, again, I think more of them will come in for Sunday. If they weren't here, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, they, if people book flights to get here by Sunday, which is kind of the nice thing. It might be a not so nice thing for the people that are already here that, ha that are spending an extra day, but for the ones that want to get here and be here, they can – probably hop on a flight, try to book a flight, and get here in time to see it. And again, on ABC, how great is that? And I saw that they announced the watch party in PBA. I'm sure that's going to be rocking, too. But there's no doubt in my mind that it is going to be. And you will be able to tell the red tomorrow or Sunday, right. whereas if it was Wisconsin, Nebraska, you might not be able to tell. But there, it was just, we were talking to Andy Jackson's aunt and uncle last night, and they were saying, there's just so much red in here. And even you can see the N's and the W's, it's different. And, and there were not very much, there was not much orange in there last night. So unless the Texas fans show up, it's going to be, again, heavily dominated by Husker Nation. Oh, that sounds great. Well, we're going to put you to work the next couple of hours. You're going to talk to JB. Lexi, Lanny, uh, Bergen, Andy, we're going to hear from all of them down there in Tampa from the work you've done last night and earlier today. So looking forward to getting into all of that. Also talk a little wrestling later on in the program with Mark Manny, Husker wrestling coach, will be here as well. So sit tight. We're going to get back to you. I know JB's coming up in our next segment. as Sports Highlight rolls along here on a Friday night. Welcome to Sue's Frame Shop. Yes, can you frame these, please? Um, these are Nebraska Lottery Holiday Classic Scratch tickets. I know. Isn't the classic Christmas artwork on them just charming? Now, be sure not to smudge it when you frame them. But if you scratch them and enter non-winning tickets online, you could win up to $20,000. Give me those. Here's the quarter. Let's start scratching. Promotion ends January 3rd, 2024. Top prize odds vary by game. Woodhouse Buick GMC is bringing you more this holiday. With every new Buick or GMC purchase from Woodhouse, we're including three years of scheduled maintenance. That's three years of worry-free oil changes and tire rotations included in your purchase of a new Buick or GMC. And with great year-end finance and lease offers going on, you'll save even more. It's our gift to you this holiday season when you experience the difference and shop with Woodhouse Buick GMC. We are professional grade. Offer expires January 2nd, 2024. See dealer for details. 
At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks. Foundation solutions crafted with pride. The official foundation company of the Huskers. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks. Foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. It's time to light up the season during the Make the Holidays Bright sales event. Get our best offers and choose from a huge selection of Ford F-150 trucks with the capability, convenience, and technology to help bring us together. Wow. Discover how Ford F-150 can make the holidays bright. Now, get a new 2023 Ford F-150 with 2.9% financing for 72 months. Only at your Midwest Ford dealers. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra. The perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Welcome back inside of our Huskers Radio Network broadcast studio, sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. I've got my Pepsi here tonight, and I've had some delicious wings from Wingstop. Camden, Cole, and I have just been devouring these wings. So thanks to the folks at Wingstop. I'll tell you what, this is a great time of year to be ordering wings. you got bowl games. you got NFL coming down the stretch of the regular season. you got New Year's Eve parties. Be thinking about Wingstop for one of those events. They do a great job. I, I, for the first time tonight, I tried their teriyaki sauce on the wings. Wonderful. Fantastic. Good. Good stuff. Rudy in Florida on our text line is saying, Go Big Red. We'll be there in section 104. Tell Jessica that we'll be wearing red. Also, win or lose, this has been a very incredible good job, Rudy. Incredible season. Hope for the best against the Horn. You're exactly right. Um, that's, that's fantastic. Crypto says, I want to know about the teams that beat Texas. They have four losses. They lost their first match of the year. Tyler Hildebrand's Long Beach State team. Went to Austin and beat him. Opening night of the season. So way back there in August. 
Then they lost to Stanford on their home in Austin. Stanford swept them. They got revenge on that, obviously, last week winning in Palo Alto. They lost three sets to one to Washington State, and then they lost at K-State in early November. Got swept with the Wildcats, who the Huskers swept back in September. So those are their four losses. Long Beach State, Stanford, Washington State, who was a good team. They were in the tournament. And K-State, those are their four losses uh, that they had on their year. Keep them coming if you want to fire some more techs in on us as well. Um, earlier today, Jessica caught up with the man, the myth, the legend, John Baylor, the voice of Husker Volleyball. Here's their breakdown of what's about to come our way on Sunday. Well, we're here for media day as the Huskers have punched their ticket to the national championship match. What a special night. John Baylor here. He was on the call with it. How much fun was that final four to be able to call that one? Fun. I like winning. Yeah. Winning's fun. You know, winning's underrated. And uh, the Huskers are doing a lot of that uh, this year, 33-1. and one. What was the key? What separated and what they did last night against Pitt to be able to sweep and, and really do what not very many people have been able to do to Pitt all year? Back at Alec, 12 blocks, kabooms, blocking them. <laughs> she was huge. And uh, huge kills by Harper, who had a big night offensively. But I just thought Nebraska just kind of sort of incrementally wore down Pittsburgh. But the block was huge. And to get some blocks early and often against Texas will be key. You know, it seemed like, too, there were different moments that somebody stepped up throughout the match last night. And that's kind of been pretty pretty much what this team has done all year, right? Whenever somebody's needed, they rise to the occasion. Harper's always taken big swings. Merritt's led the way. Those middles with big blocks. And if they're involved offensively, you know good things are happening. But the one you don't notice is Lexi Rodriguez. Because opponents design their entire game plan around avoiding her. But she led the team in digs yesterday. She's going to be huge against Texas. All right, let, let's talk about Texas. What about them? What, I guess, allowed them to beat Wisconsin when everybody probably had Wisconsin as the favorite and, and probably a shoe in to make it to the national championship match? This is absolutely the hottest team in the country right now. They just dismantled Stanford and made Wisconsin look a lot like Iowa. And uh, basically, Wisconsin couldn't pass the ball. And so they became really predictable. And so they just kept setting the outside. And Timmy Thomas Ilara and Sarah Franklin, National Player of the Year, just kept going cross court. And Texas has a great sophomore uh, libero, and she just kept digging it. The Huskers cannot be predictable, which means you have to pass well. Got to own the middle, got to set the middle, got to set right, got to set back real, got to set left side, so their defense cannot get comfortable because, boy, were they comfortable yesterday against uh, Wisconsin. It was kind of like uh, Devaney, the Bob, what, what, what is this, East, Southeast, right? I mean, it was, there were so many Husker fans everywhere. It was loud. What was your take on just the way that Husker Nation showed out down here? It's a doggone Husker mixer. I mean, if you show up here <laughs> single, not for long. I mean, it's just like you wander around the concourse. It's just GBR, GBR. It's pretty sweet. People travel well, and we don't bicker. You know, we get along. It's like, hey, how's it going, GBR? Um, it's pretty special to see. This is kind of our bowl game, right? And uh, this is a uh, – never underestimate the impact Nebraska volleyball's following has on this culture, on the recruiting, the talent that ends up here, because you, everyone wants to be important, right? And Nebraska volleyball fans make sure that anyone affiliated with the program knows that that is the case with them. I know it would have been fitting to have Wisconsin and Nebraska, but how fitting is it to have Texas and Nebraska? Well, I sort of equate Nebraska Wisconsin volleyball with Nebraska Oklahoma football in the old days built on respect, a little bit of fear, grudging respect, and Nebraska-Texas volleyball with Nebraska-Colorado football from the old days, where there's a fair amount of animus, which is like a nice way of saying it's an, uh, it's an, there's a lot of animated emotion uh, from both sides. Sometimes Texas will downplay it. No, no, they care about Nebraska, and I know the opposite is true. You ready for another national championship match? I mean, as a play-by-play -play guy, this is your dream, right? To be able to call on, on this stage. How excited has it sunk, sunk in that you get to call another one? Oh, it's so fun. I mean, what a, what a privilege. So I think about it a little more, but I hope it's not going to divert a whole lot from, you know, what I might do on the road in East Lansing in the middle of October. But you think about the pregame. You think about the postgame. And i got to think about how many national championship matches I've called. I'll have that figured out. But, uh, of course, championships, I've called five. I hope it'll be six championship matches. 
we got to figure that out. But we could be up to about 10 or 11. So what a privilege. Speaking of that, so the pregame show is on at 2 o'clock Central Time, right? 3 o'clock will be the, the match set time. But you guys have a full hour pregame show just like you have all season long. And, and it's going to be a good one. Uh, yes, I will not be going into my middle school hobbies. We're going to get good guests. And, you know, this is our 14th Final Four in the last 30 years. Just think of that. I mean, it's just sort of a, an annual tradition almost every other year. So, uh, yeah, we'll have fabulous guests. Hopefully a few dignitaries are still in the crowd. We'll come grab them and throw them on the pregame. Just be there sending positive psychic energy all Sunday afternoon. All right, again, 2 o'clock Central Time is the pregame show. 3 o'clock is match time. And, again, appreciate John Henry's for sponsoring our postseason content all season long. For John Baylor, I'm Jessica Cootie. I've got to, I got to correct Jessica. She's living in that east, eastern time zone. It's 2 o'clock Central for a match. 1 o'clock pregame here on the HRN. Same time as Husker basketball on, on a Sunday. The men will be down in Manhattan to take on Kansas State. 1 o'clock pregame, 2 o'clock first tip. Women play at noon against Southern at PBA at 1 o'clock. You want to come down and catch maybe the second half of the women's game. Maybe you're late getting out of church. You want to come down and watch the second half of the women play Southern. They tip at noon. At 1 o'clock, doors are open and wide open for free admission to come in for a big Husker watch party at PBA for the volleyball championship. So 2 o'clock, match starts 1 o'clock for pregame coverage here on the Huskers radio network. Um, Art in Los Angeles said, Greg, um, 33 wins, is that a Husker record? It is. That's the most they've had in a single season. They're breaking all kinds of records this season. How awesome is that? Go Big Red. Yeah, it's just, it's just been, and John has used this a lot, that it's been a storybook type year. Starting with the stadium match back in August, so I, know, I know that wasn't the first match of the year. They had that opening weekend with SMU and Utah State and Lipscomb that they put in that opening weekend, but it was match four in the stadium, 92,000, three folks through the turnstiles to set a world record for a women's sporting event. And then it has just carried on. I mean, undefeated until the last week of the regular season. Win the Big Ten by a couple of games. That's, that's always a goal for this program is to do that because how good the league is in this sport. And you get to a Final Four. Check, check, check. And then obviously the last goal is to win that national championship. And they'll have to earn it against um, Texas on Sunday. So 2 o'clock, first serve Central Time. 3 Eastern, which is where the team is located down there in Tampa. Woodhouse Auto Family, your trusted auto partner, 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. All right, uh, keep those texts coming. A bunch of them flying in here as well. Love seeing the folks on the, in the chat room tonight. Busy chat room for a Friday night. Must not be uh, many holiday parties tonight around the Husker Nation. They're all locked into this volleyball team. I love it. All right, we're back with a chat with Lexi Rodriguez. Jessica caught up with her after the match last night. We'll have that for you next. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exist to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. When you're clocking out and happy hours already started. But. You're clocking out and happy hours already started. The choice to enjoy is easy. Bud Light. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Pick up Bud Light at your local convenience store today. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Dear roads, trails, and rivers, you ready for some SUV action? Toyota SUVs can roll their sleeves up for tight turns and twisty trails, dress up for a night out on the town, or head to the great outdoors. Take your family adventure game to a whole new level with the roomy Highlander. Make a serious splash with the rugged, revved-up RAV4. And tow all your toys in the spacious new Sequoia. Don't forget the Trail Tame and 4Runner and the sleek Venza Hybrid. 
All Toyota SUVs feature a whole suite of creature comforts to keep you and yours cozy in the cabin. Check out this legendary lineup at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. See your Omaha Metro and Lincoln Toyota dealers. Corwin Toyota of Bellevue, Village Point Toyota of Omaha, Baxter Toyota of La Vista, or Baxter Toyota of Lincoln. Move through the world in a legendary SUV from Woodhouse Cadillac. Be iconic and find your next luxury vehicle in store or online anytime at woodhousecadillac.com. Leases starting at $539 a month for 39 months. 10,000 miles per year on the 2024 Cadillac CT5 Luxury. With approved credit, must have current Cadillac financial lease. 3,000 down plus first payment and $299 dollar fee due at signing. Offer expires 1-2-2024. See dealer for details. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Hey Husker fans, it's Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. As we get ready to celebrate 1890's one-year anniversary, I'm proud to say the 1890 Initiative now represents 150 Husker student-athletes in nine sports. And with your help, we can keep 1890 going strong, helping student-athletes get the most from their name, image, and likeness, and preparing them for life after college. Visit 1890Nebraska.com to learn more about NIL and 1890 and contribute today. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. We're back inside of our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and a whole lot more Acres solutions for every field. Cam did, did, did some research. I need to correct myself. The 33 wins is not a new season. I tie second highest total. They did go undefeated in 2000, won a national title with 34. So they'll need to win Sunday to match the single season mark of 34 wins. Four hours to Lincoln in our chat room says, Greg, my work Christmas party is tomorrow during the wrestling match. Oh, that's too bad. Oscars will be wrestling. South Dakota State, pretty good team at 6 o'clock tomorrow night at the Devaney Center. We're going to hear all about it. And hour number two, Mark Manny will be here to talk about the Husker wrestling team, which is off to a tremendous start this season. This will be their final match before Christmas. They'll then break for a while. They're back uh, right after Christmas to have another non-conference duel before they get into league wrestling as well all right uh big win last night oscar sweep pit afterwards jessica caught up with the husker libero and all-american lexi rodriguez well headed to the national championship uh, how good does that feel that, that this team made it to where you guys set out to to go yeah it's feels amazing we had big goals at the beginning of the season and to know that there's only one more thing left to accomplish it's pretty incredible you know, from the start, you guys just seem so locked in. Uh, how ready, what was the mindset, the mentality of this team just coming into this one from the start? Yeah, I mean, I think our coaching staff did a really good job of preparing us for this game and for Pitt. And I feel like once we got out there, we were just going to let loose, play our game and see what happens. And I feel like everyone played so free. We had so much confidence in ourselves and we just had a lot of fun together. You know, a lot of people made it about their offense versus Nebraska's defense. You personally, how much did you guys take that, hey, this is a challenge we want. We want to show how, how good of a defense we can be against one of the nation's best offenses. Oh, yeah. I think we knew um, all week that our defense was going to get tested, but we're a gritty team, and our block and D is pretty gritty, and we're not going to give up. We're not going to let an offense stop our defense, and so I think that was huge for us. And I mean, I know everyone saw what Becca did tonight and how much energy and how much she gave to this team, and I think that was a huge reason of our success. 
How good was the block there, especially in that first set to, to help set the tone? Yeah, I mean, I think Andy got one of the first blocks of like the first two points or something, and it really did set the tone from the start. Just having that fuel um, to drive us and seeing our defense work so hard right from the start, I think it was huge. What's the connection like with Bergen Riley? I mean, you guys just seem to just do so well off of each other, whether it's she's passing to you, you're, you're getting the set, or vice versa. Uh, seems like you guys just have such, such a good connection. What's it like playing with her? It's awesome. I think we both just trust each other so much, no matter what part of the game it is. And when I'm with her, I just feel like a lot calmer. Like, we know what we're going to bring to the table, and we believe in each other, and we love each other. How big is, is her role and what she's been able to do to help you guys get to this point? Oh, it's everything. I mean, a freshman setter at this level, on this stage, being able to perform the way she does, it's a huge reason to our success and why our offense is so good. Um, she puts in a lot of work and she gives our, their hitters great opportunities and I think everyone sees that. Throughout the course of a match, you guys find different ways to, to be successful, whether it's defense, whether it's offense, whatever that might be. Uh, what goes into that? How much do you guys know that, hey, no matter what, we are going to find a way to get this thing done. I think it just shows how much trust we have in one another. Um, we don't rely on just one person. And if someone's kind of struggling a little bit, someone's going to step up. And I just feel like we have so much confidence in one another. And we just really enjoy playing with each other. Last thing I got for you, just how much love do you guys have for each other? And, and just knowing that this is what you did because of the chemistry and, and love you have for each other. So much. I think we all know what we bring to the table, but we love each other no matter what happens. And we're always focused on the next point, the next game. And no matter what happens, we're going to do it together. Congratulations, Lexi. Thank you. All right, there's Jessica with Lexi after the match last night. Husker sweep pit. Now we'll take on Texas 2 o'clock on Sunday, 1 o'clock, bringing in coverage here on the Huskers radio network. Uh, before we hit the next break, I do want to talk a little football. Dylan Rayola is here, the five star quarterback, currently committed to Georgia, is at the stadium. We had eyes on him today, so he is here. And there's other visitors here this weekend as well. We're now five days out from signing day, which is December the 20th. So Rayola is here. So is Bly Hill, who is a corner from St. Francis, Pennsylvania. And then two young men. One is an Oregon commit, linebacker Dylan Williams, who is from Long Beach, California, this was a surprise that he's here, uh, but he is. So Oscar's trying to get him to flip here in the last week. And Vincent Shavers, who was committed to Miami, he is from Miami Central High School, was committed to the Hurricanes, but apparently they have they've got a numbers issue, so they've had to release a couple of guys uh, from their commitments and no longer offering Vincent Shavers a scholarship. So he is here as well. So you've got... Four official visitors, Dylan Rayola, pretty big plum in the sky, uh, Blythe Hill, and then Vincent Shavers, Dylan Williams, all here this weekend. This is the last weekend you can have visits. We go into a dead period Sunday night where you cannot contact recruits. Signing day is Wednesday. We will have coverage via our YouTube stream Wednesday morning beginning at 7 a.m. Jessica and I will have coverage of that. We'll hear from some of the commitments who will then be Husker signees at that point in time. We'll hear from the assistant coaches throughout the program with their thoughts on these individuals. Matt Rural will stop by. Uh, so we'll have a busy Wednesday morning. So if you're working that day, flip on the YouTube stream. We'll keep you up to date with the latest information on Husker football recruiting. That's the 20th, so five days out. It's really kind of snuck up on us that we're this close. But this is the last weekend that Nebraska can have official visits and they're taking advantage with a couple of guys who, one, had been committed to Miami. Now it's kind of a free agent. The other is still committed to Oregon, but obviously wants to take one more look at Nebraska and is here. And then the big carrot is Dylan Rayola, and he is here this weekend. So you talk about what would be just a big coup, and I know it has been a roller coaster ride with Dylan, a lot of ups, mostly downs, because he's been committed to Georgia for more than six months. At one point, he was committed to Ohio State. Uh, but a lot of positive signs that Rayola is ready to become a Cornhusker next Wednesday. So keep an eye on all that over the weekend. We'll update you more about it on Monday night's show. All right, 402-413-2400. We're back with more Sports Honor, the last part of Hour 1, coming up next.
Woodhouse Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is bringing you more this holiday season. Finishing the year with big savings on the entire model lineup during the Wrap Up the Year sales event. Save up to $13,000 off MSRP on a 2024 Ram 1500 Crew Cab Laramie 4x4 for qualified buyers. Explore all our year-end lease and finance deals at WoodhouseCDJRBellevue.com or WoodhouseChryslerJeepDodge.com. This is Woodhouse. With approved grant, tax title license extra. When financed with Chrysler Capital, $299 dot fee to its sign Stock number BC240134. Offer expires 1231-2023. See dealer for details. Things that impair you come in many different shapes and sizes. Some are the shape of beer and liquor bottles. Others look like cigarettes but aren't cigarettes at all. These are the things we know impair us, the things our parents warned us about. What we're not always aware of is our new prescription or the over-the-counter medicine we picked up just for allergies or a bad cold. See, it doesn't just matter how much of a substance you take. If you are impaired, driving is deceptively dangerous. Don't drive impaired. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. There's no community like a Cenex community. And that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door, powered locally at Cenex. Welcome to Sue's Frame Shop. Yes, can you frame these, please? Um, these are Nebraska Lottery Holiday Classic Scratch Tickets. I know. Isn't the classic Christmas artwork on them just charming? Now, be sure not to smudge it when you frame them. But if you scratch them and enter non-winning tickets online, you could win up to $20,000. Give me those. Here's a quarter. Let's start scratching. Promotion ends January 3rd, 2024. Top prize odds vary by game. Woodhouse Auto Family, they're your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. Greg Sharp back with you. Jessica will be popping in and out to the rest of the show. She's been covering Oscars down in Tampa throughout the week, getting ready for a national championship. It's just remarkable. This will be Nebraska's fifth appearance in the title game in the last nine years. That's just remarkable. And what just a remarkable season that that team has had. And based on what we saw last night, that was maybe their best match of the year. I mean, they were really, really good last night in so many phases. And I know John Cook called it ugly volleyball at times, but they were just blocking machines, and the defense was phenomenal. Guys throwing their bodies all over the court. It was just really impressive for Nebraska last night as well. Uh, Mentioned that Dylan Rail is here. We did notice that... Daniel Kalen, who's been the committed quarterback from Bell West, tweeted out a red balloon and a GBR just a few minutes ago. He was supposed to go visit Michigan State. Maybe he decided not to go make that and went ahead and decided to lock in and stay with his commitment to the Huskers. Again, we'll find out all of this by next Wednesday, but that would be good. I, you know, you probably, it's not maybe ideal to have two quarterbacks in the same class, which if Rayola flips, that's what the case would be. But, you know, with Jeff Sims going on a portal earlier this week, it's a little bit, that room's a little bit thin. Heinrich is still here. Chubb is still here. Uh, so that would give you four scholarship quarterbacks. And that's okay. That's about what you kind of want. Um, but, you know, maybe you wanted, I, I don't know. But, but I, for Daniel's sake, I hope so. He's been so excited about being a Cornhusker for a long time that I hope, I hope this is where he ends up. He's also been a really good recruiter for Nebraska as well. He has been out uh, talking up the Huskers uh, for, 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 um, for months after he became committed. If you're watching on the YouTube stream, and I have like 
barbecue sauce on my cheeks. I apologize. I'm enjoying my Pepsi with Wingstop dropped by Wings tonight. Fantastic. I've not heard from Camden and Cole in 45 minutes. I think they're up to their elbows in Wings over there right now. So thank you to Wingstop. And all these holiday parties, New Year's Eve, pretty good little thought. Maybe order you some Wingstop. Um, during the way. Also, want to put in one more plug about the watch party on Sunday at PBA. Women's basketball plays Southern at noon. Our coverage begins at 1130 pregame with Matt and Jeff. At 1 o'clock that day, you want, if you don't want, can't make the whole women's game at 1 o'clock that day, you can walk right in for free. Doors open free to the public at 1 for a big watch party for the National Championship of Volleyball at 2 that day. So... That's an option for you to go do and hang out at PBA with a bunch of Husker fans and root on that volleyball team against Texas. So that's a big option for you. Watch party PBA should be gigantic out there on Sunday afternoon uh, at Pinnacle Bank Arena. Wrestling tomorrow night, we're going to talk to Mark Manny next hour. We're also going to hear next hour from Lanny Choi Boy, who Jessica caught up with today. We're going to hear some more post-game reaction from last night's win from Bergen Riley and also from Andy Jackson, and I'm going to sit down with Mark Manning, Husker wrestling coach. They play tomorrow. They wrestle tomorrow night at Devaney against South Dakota State. Speaking of South Dakota State, we had it's kind of tripped on this. They're playing football tonight. This is the semifinals of the FCS playoffs up in Brookings. Pretty nice day. I don't think they're getting any precip. It's probably upper 30s. That's a pretty big break. Uh, that far north, uh, they're just whipping Albany. It's 20, about to be 28 nothing mid second quarter. South Dakota State, the defending FCS champs, number one seed overall. The other semifinals tomorrow, it should be a dandy. North Dakota State against Montana, uh, that should be terrific. And, and, you know, there's an awful lot of Nebraska kids that play for SDSU or North Dakota State. We've had some people, you know, you had Easton Stick playing quarterback last night for the Chargers. <laughs> Boy, were they bad. Uh, but he was an Omaha kid that played at North Dakota State, so... A uh, football game on tonight, although it's becoming a route, about to be, with the pending the extra point, about to be a 28 nothing game uh, midway through the second quarter up in Brookings tonight. So best of luck to those teams. Three bowl games tomorrow, three NFL games tomorrow. There is a slew of really good college basketball matchups this weekend involving Big Ten teams. Huskers play at K-State Sunday. That one also tips off at 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock pregame coverage on some of these Husker uh, radio network stations on Sunday. Later tonight, boy, you've got a juicy one. you got UConn and Gonzaga playing in a couple of hours tonight out on the West Coast, so that should be a lot of fun as well. Pretty good weekend for sports. After a week that's been kind of blah, right? I mean, this week's been, and I know a lot of schools around the country are in the midst of their final exams, as were we here at UNL, and finals did end today, and Camden survived. I think all of our young folks uh, that help us here at the network have all survived. Some have already gone home. I guess, I guess they're okay. Um, and then there was graduation for the graduates today, the graduate, graduate doctors, those type of things today. The uh, undergraduate ceremony is tomorrow at 9. 33 Husker athletes getting their diplomas tomorrow. That is a fantastic accomplishment. So congratulations to not only the student athletes, but all the, all the students on campus that are getting their degrees tomorrow. What a fun show so far. Great to hear from JB. Always fun to hear his thoughts. He is living the high life, right, folks? Calling all these national championship and final four matches for Oscar volleyball. It's a pretty, uh, pretty cool thing. Somebody was asking about will there be a parade if the Huskers – I don't know if there's a parade. I'm, I'm guessing probably some kind of celebration at the Devaney Center early next week if they win. I don't want to jinx it, though. I don't want to talk too much about that. you got to take care of business. you got to take care of those hook em horns uh, on the match on Sunday. All right, busy first hour, just as busy next hour as we try to keep you entertained here on a Friday night of Sports Nightly. Our Woodhouse Auto family, they are your trusted auto partner. They've got 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. One hour down, one more to go. We'll have winners and losers. We've got all kinds of good stuff coming up on the other side. Don't go anywhere. Come on back here on a Friday night.
Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's time to light up the season during the Make the Holidays Bright sales event. Get our best offers and choose from a huge selection of Ford F-150 trucks with the capability, convenience, and technology to help bring us together. Wow. Discover how Ford F-150 can make the holidays bright. Now, get a new 2023 Ford F-150 with 2.9% financing for 72 months. Only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at nebraskachiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Dear roads, trails, and rivers, you ready for some SUV action? Toyota SUVs can roll their sleeves up for tight turns and twisty trails, dress up for a night out on the town, or head to the great outdoors. Take your family adventure game to a whole new level with the roomy Highlander. Make a serious splash with the rugged, revved up RAV4. And tow all your toys in the spacious new Sequoia. Don't forget the Trail Tamen 4Runner and the sleek Venza Hybrid. All Toyota SUVs feature a whole suite of creature comforts to keep you and yours cozy in the cabin. Check out this legendary lineup at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. See your Omaha Metro and Lincoln Toyota dealers. Corwin Toyota of Bellevue, Village Point Toyota of Omaha, Baxter Toyota of La Vista, or Baxter Toyota of Lincoln.